What's going on everyone? My name's A.B. Frank, but just call me Alex down in the comments and welcome to the Bookish Report where I mainly speak about gas lamp horror and gas lamp fantasy and that's exactly what I'll be doing in this video. In fact, I'll be saying exactly what gas lamp horror and gas lamp fantasy is in case any of you are wondering. For the longest time, I didn't even know that this was a thing, but when Daniel Green mentioned it in a video about fantasy subgenres, I thought... That sounds like some, the thing that I like, that sounds like it's right up my street. The tone of the writing, the 19th century fashion and decor, the medical practices and mad science and mad scientists of the day <laughs> in, in real life and in fiction, the industrial era and the already established gothic literature just blend together perfectly to make this really rich subgenre. So from Bram Stoker's Dracula to Laura Purcell's The Silent Companions and the many stories before and after those and in between those, Gas Lamp Horror and Gas Lamp Fantasy is my favourite subgenre. So what is it I hear you ask? Great question. It's a subgenre that combines fantasy and horror elements with historical fiction, primarily the Victorian era and in some instances the Edwardian era, so the early 1900s. The reason it differs from pure fantasy like J.R.R. Tolkien or from crime, pure crime like Sherlock Holmes, is the supernatural elements that it introduces. This is things like magic, fantastical creatures, demons, ghosts or monsters. It brings forward a lot of the tropes and themes from gothic literature to incite dread and suspense and tension and apprehension. The, the term gas lamp fantasy was coined quite recently in 2006, a little bit of research has told me. and. It was coined by, the name is Kaja Foglio. I do apologise if that's not the way to pronounce it. She and her husband Phil Foglio have actually got a graphic novel or comic series called Genius Girl and she came up with this term to differentiate it from uh, the, the steampunk genre. And here's a quote from this lady. I called it Gaslamp Fantasy because around the time we were bringing Girl Genius out there was a comic called Steampunk on the shelves and I didn't want any confusion. Plus, I've never liked the term steampunk much for our work. It's derived from cyberpunk, a term which I think actually fits its genre well, but we have no punk and we have more than just steam and using a different name seemed appropriate. I misremembered a term that I'd, that I'd come across in the foreword to an H. Ryder Haggard book where the author was talking about Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, Ryder Haggard and that sort of pre-pulp adventure material and came up with gas lamp fantasy. I felt a bit foolish when I discovered that I had made up my own term, but it works and I like it, <laughs> so it's stuck. A quick note on what gas lamp fantasy and gas lamp horror is not. So gas lamp fantasy and gas lamp horror is not steampunk, which focuses on the steam powered technology of that era. It's, uh, gas lamp horror and gas lamp fantasy doesn't really focus on the machinery and the technology per se of the era at all. There's more to it than, than that. Nothing against steampunk, by the way, just in case the steampunk police are on patrol. So there's, so, I'll give you some example authors then who write in this subgenre. So you got Bram Stoker, Laura Purcell, Mary Shelley, Robert Louis Stevenson, Susan Hill, if things go according to plan, me. And there's many more, by the way, there's loads. If you wanted to have a, like a little dabble at this uh, in, in terms of an anthology, then there's a, a book called Queen Victoria's Book of Spells, which is on my list, but I've not read it yet. So just to, um, to acknowledge that, you know, dis full disclosure, I've not read that yet, but um, I do plan on doing it. It's on my list for s some point in my life. I don't know when I'm going to squeeze it in yet. <laughs> but Queen Victoria's Book of Spells is uh, an anthology. It's edited by, let me give you the names, Terry Windling and Ellen Datlow, who have both actually won the Bram Stoker Award. So this is a legit anthology this is proper so graphic novels then that you might be interested in this subgenre we've got the ghost and the lady um, which i can't even remember if i finished this and um, this is book one in the black museum series uh, i won't try and pronounce the name but it's at the top there i can't even remember if i finished it or not i'll have to uh, I'll have to fly through it again just to make sure <laughs> there's also a book called from hell by alan moore obviously a genius Girl, which I've already touched on. I've also been told about Monstress by Marjorie Lou, I believe is the name. So uh, they might be worth checking out as well if you're interested in uh, some graphic no novels in this field. Or if you fancy a little bit of TV uh, streaming in, in this subgenre, then you can think of stuff like Carnival Row, which is an Amazon original. Um, I suppose even Shadow and Bone, which is a new Netflix thing um, adapted from the Lee Bardugo books, which I've not watched yet. You've got The Irregulars on Netflix, which is new, which is a... Um, about the 
the uh, Baker Street Irregulars um, with a, a fantastical twist, uh, which is a Sherlock Holmes theme, if you didn't know. You've got The Alienist, you've got Penny Dreadful, you've got A Discovery of Witches. So all of those things I'll hopefully, and I intend to speak about at some point and do reviews of on the channel. So keep an eye out for those. And there's also a ton of films, and I'll try and name a few here. You've got um, one which I'm, I'm yet to watch, but uh, which I believe is, is quite good on Amazon, or Amazon in the UK at least, called Tidelands. You've got Crimson Peak, which you've probably all seen. Carmilla, the Carmilla adaptation, a vampire story. Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Slayer, which is a bit steampunky, I think, as well. Um, I've not seen that yet, but um, it's on my list. I want to pr save it probably till it gets a bit dark, because it's broad daylight till like 10 o'clock at night at this time. And even to a certain extent, Van Helsing, the Hugh Jackman film. Speaking of Hugh Jackman, he's also in a film called The Prestige, which is worth uh, worth checking out. That's a very good film. Obviously, the adaptation of The Woman in Black. There's absolutely loads of things to watch and read in this subgenre and get busy with. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, the TBR as long as anyone, so... Um, looking forward to you know doing the getting through that and doing videos and adding to it as we go as well. So, if uh, these are the books you'd be interested in and, and and the stuff you'd be interested in me talking about in terms of TV and film as well, then consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.